Hi everyone, it's Dr. Steph. I'm an assistant prof at the University of Toronto Medical School where I teach financial literacy to students. I'm also on Instagram and YouTube as Breaking Bad Debt. So today's video will teach you everything you need to know about tuition tax credits. If you find it helpful, please subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions. The first thing you need to know about tax credits is what they are and how they differ from tax deductions. A tax deduction, also called a tax write-off, can help bring your income down so that you're taxed at a lower tax bracket. Listed here are some common tax deductions that you can consider. A common tax deduction for students might be moving expenses if you've moved over 40 kilometers away for school or for a summer job. Another one is childcare expenses for parents who are students themselves. If you're working from home for at least half the time for four consecutive weeks or more, you can claim home office expenses, but will need a T2200 form from your work. The income you make after tax deductions is now subject to taxes, and that's where tax credits help. These credits lower the amount of taxes you owe, so for someone like me who's been in school for over 10 years, I ended up accumulating over 100,000 in tuition tax credits, which helped me save a lot on taxes. So remember, tax deductions help bring your income, taxable income down, to a lower tax bracket, whereas the tax credit affects this tax owing number directly. So how does the T2202 tuition tax credit uh, work? So usually around January or February, you will be able to receive a tax slip from your school's uh, portal, which is called a T2202 tuition and enrollment certificate. So this is what the T2202 form looks like, which will indicate the tuition paid and the period of time you were in school. So if you went to school outside of Canada, you would get a TL11A, which is the most common one used. But if you live near the Canada-US border and you commute it to school, you would need to use a TL11C. The TL11D can often be confused with the TL11A, but this is for any educational institution, whereas the TL11A is for universities specifically. There used to be a TL11B, but it no longer exists. So how do you qualify for tuition tax credits? First, you have to be at least 16 years old, and you have to either be a full-time or part-time student at a post-secondary institution in Canada. So this includes university, college, uh, and trade school where you're obtaining skills towards an occupation. The other criteria is that the tuition you paid has to be more than $100 for it to qualify as a tax credit. The other thing I want to highlight is if you've paid exam fees in order to get your license to practice your profession or trade, those count as tuition tax credits. This is great because I have spent like thousands to get my medical license. So remember to collect the exam receipt and collect your tax credits. When can't you claim the tuition tax credit? Well, if your tuition fees were reimbursed by someone else, such as your employer or one of your parents' employers, um, or if you're working a federal or provincial job program where the amount is not included in your income, then you can't claim your tuition as a tax credit. Once you know how much you paid for tuition, that allows you to calculate your tax credit. So let's say on your T2202 form from January to April semester, it says you paid $10,000 in tuition this year. You would multiply that by 15%, which is the lowest federal tax bracket. This equals 1,500. Depending on the province you live in, you can get a provincial tax credit as well. So for example, in Ontario, the lowest tax bracket is 5.05% which comes out to be a tax credit of $505. That produces a total tax credit of $2050. What if, as a student, you didn't make any income to be taxed as, scholarship, as scholarships and bursaries are not taxed as income for full-time students, uh, or the tax owing on your income is less than the tax credit amount? Then you can do one of two things you can carry forward your unused tax credit to a later year when you are making taxable income, such as when you graduate. 
uh, or if you have a summer job, for instance. The other option is you can transfer up to $5,000 of that year's tuition amount to a family member, such as your parents, grandparents, or your spouse, or common law partner's parents or grandparents. This can help them reduce the taxes they owe. Remember, tuition tax credits are non-refundable, which means that if you don't use all of them in one year, you don't get the money back as a tax refund, but you also don't lose them either. It just gets deferred to future years. How you know how much gets carried forward? Well, you can find that on your Notice of Assessment. To access your Notice of Assessment, you would need to log on to your MyCRA account and find it in your mailbox. A common question I get asked by students is, can I defer using my tuition credits until I'm making a higher income? The answer is no. It'll be applied to your taxes the moment you make any taxable income. And after all, why would you want to defer it? If I asked you if you want to pay $2,050 less tax now or later, of course you would want it now. So speaking of getting your tax credit earlier than later, if you're working and earning a paycheck, you can have your tuition tax credits applied directly to the tax you're paying with each paycheck. This way, you'll be paying less tax with each paycheck and, making, and taking more money home. Now listen carefully because this part confuses a lot of students. When you start working after graduation, your employer will give you a TD-1 federal form and a TD-1-ON form if you're working in Ontario, for example, as it might vary across province. These are called the Personal Tax Credit Return Forms, which helps your employer determine how much tax to withhold on your pay. There will be a line on the TD-1 where it allows you to put your tuition amount, but you do not put your total tuition tax credit amount on this line. This is where people make a mistake. You would only fill in this line if you're still a student or if you're paying tuition this year. You wouldn't put the total tuition you've paid in the past on here. What you would use instead is the T1213 Request to Reduce Tax Deductions at Source form. If you scroll to the other section on line 11, you can put your tuition credit amount, which you can find on your CRA Notice of Assessment, and specify that it is for carrying forward tuition credits. You can write that in and on a second copy of the same form, write in your provincial tuition credits. When I started med school, uh, when I graduated med school and started earning a salary as a resident, this is what I used to get less tax withheld on each paycheck so that I had more money to take home each month that I could use towards paying my student debt. I hope this video helped clarify some things about tuition credits, and if you want to check out my other video about paying down federal and provincial student loans, I've linked that video above and in the description below. Thank you for watching.